Okay, I would like to call to order the um, Indian Trail Planning Department meeting on January 21st, 2021. Thank you. And roll call for the members. Cheryl Meany. Present. Larry Dukes. Present. Michelle Reese. Michelle Reese. Meg Fielding. Present. We'll go back to Michelle. She is muted right now. Michelle, if you can hear us, can you unmute? Hey, sorry guys, I just got, was able to sign on. Thank you. Okay. Chair Fielding, you can proceed. Okay, so we are here to um, address the um, request for rezoning for CZ 2020-0098. Um, uh, are there any additional uh, public comments that came in since the meeting on Tuesday? No, ma'am, we have not received any additional public comments. Okay. Are there any additional questions from board members? From me, no, ma'am. Okay. Michelle? Okay. L Larry, I know you were not, did, were you able to come on Tuesday? No, I wasn't here Tuesday. So what? I don't want us to go through all the comments and everything, but generally just, were there many public comments or questions? Matt, do you want to address that? I can address that. Uh, hello, Mr. Dukes. This is Matt Ward, senior planner. We did have one public comment from Lori Nair. She was uh, complimenting the project that, um, you know, just glad to see a public a senior living um, unit facility come into the town and, did have concerns about traffic and what was the other concern that she had? Does anybody else remember? It was traffic and I feel like there was one more. Matt, I'll be glad, um, okay. I'll be glad to reread that um, oh. if it's appropriate. Chair Fielding, if you feel like that's appropriate. Yes, please. Okay. Um, from Corey Nair, we have lived in Brookhaven for just a little over four years now and the increased traffic on Chestnut Lane has been dramatic. The little country lane now appears more like a speedway. When I drive at the posted speed limit of 35 miles per hour, I'm tailgated, honked at, and even passed. On Sunday evenings, it is not uncommon to hear motorcycles and cars to race along the stretch from Ainsdale Drive to Potter's Road. We hear the vehicles stop, rev their engine, and then race off, tires squealing. Delivery vans, large trucks with dirt, rocks, execs, speed down the hill, and round the corners into the wrong lanes. This is rarely any law enforcement of the speed limit on this road, and it seems that drivers don't know it. Uh, drivers know it. The new construction that has already occurred, the traffic circle at Chestnut and Weddington, the large apartment complex at Chestnut and Weddington, and to date, all the increased traffic we have seen from that development is the construction traffic, not residential traffic. And the senior living housing at Chestnut and Potter Road has increased the traffic to beyond what this section of the road can safely handle. Turning left from Ainsdale onto Chestnut is a short-sighted turn and with cars typically driving five to 10 miles over the speed limit, it is a dangerous turn. And yet there is another planned senior housing community just west of Brookhaven. Add to this the 500 units of already under construction and planned for the stretch of Chestnut Lane between Potter's Road and Monroe Road. How is the two lane road supposed to handle the extra traffic safely? I urge you to stop and revisit the feasibility of this large number of new housing units along Chestnut Lane. Currently, Chestnut Lane is barely able to handle the existing traffic. It is too narrow and winding and widening it would take years to get approved and completed. What happens in the meantime? 
and step back and think about the negative effects that such a lot of dense development will have on this lovely little country lane, Chestnut Lane, and the residents who live along here and near it, many of them for years. These additional high density developments will bring a minimum of 500 new cars to this uh, small road and forever change the flavor of this very special area of Indian Trail. Thank you. Um, what I will say is I have received additional information since our meeting on Tuesday about this situation. Um, obviously, the, the Sheriff's Department, there's, there's definitely some solutions there to her first statements. Um, but as far as the, um, there, there is an issue at Ainsdale and Chestnut, but it's on the Weddington side. Um, the Town of Indian Trail side is, um, is a different situation. Um, and of course, this is quite a distance from, from the development, but um, Brookhaven has been working with our engineering department in the town to, to look at solutions um, for that. But we're a little bit limited because the issue again is on uh, Weddington side. And the issue, what is it? Is it just a block of the block of traffic at the st traffic light, or um, making that? She talks about making that um, left from Ainsdale onto Chestnut. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's a very, um, I think it's very sharp, mm -hmm. um, kind of dangerous turn. If I understand mm -hmm. it correctly, it's a curve there, yeah. Okay. What is Indian Trail solution? Well, again, it's not, the, the problem's not in our jurisdiction, so we're limited. Mm. It's wedding to okay. the side where, where that, that sharp, um, awkward turn is at. How, well, so I know it's not on, I know since we want to put an apartment, another apartment complex in there, will there be a, will Indian Trail consider, I mean, I don't know if, if you this, guys can talk so to Weddington or. This area she's talking about is mm -hmm. a, a quite a ways away. From, okay. From this project that we're considering tonight. Okay. So this part, yeah, this project is closer to Old Monroe. Right. Right. There's yeah. only one. There's only one parcel separating um, this project from Old Monroe Road. So it's yeah. It's, there's that that um, what you call that um, veterinarian hospital, right? The uh, yeah. the veterinarian hospital um, is adjacent to it. Yeah, right next to it. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. okay, and and Brandy, you had sent out an email that there was some response from uh, from Clover regarding our concerns about parking. Correct, correct. And um, the applicants are um, are on the line if if they would like to kind of go through that information or if there's any questions um, of the board, but. There was some conversations on on parking, and they provided some data with all their existing locations to to show what the percentages are. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, from a staff perspective, our goal is is we don't want to put any more asphalt down um, than they need. And and you know, a lot of times the applicants know better what their parking needs are um, from experience than we do. But they did indicate that they would uh, it, uh, designate four to six parking spaces as visitor parking. Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Okay, so that answered one of my concerns. Okay, Larry, did you have any other questions? Uh, well, not to hold things up, but uh, I'm looking at the packet that we got in the mail. I'm looking mm -hmm. at page 19 on the map. Is it possible, Matt, to, to put the map up on the screen real quickly? I just, I'm not sure I'm looking at the right area. I'm looking at it there on Chestnut and close to the intersection of Old Monroe. Matt, that's the, um, the current zoning map. Right. Can you highlight that area that we're looking at? Is it that? open square yep right there and why is it in two sections two parcels that they'll be combining to oh, okay and so the entrance is off of chestnut right yeah right here mm -hmm. correct there's only a right in and a right out uh because the concrete median will be along in in the middle of uh, chestnut lane and so i understand this is for senior living but there's a lot of different categories of senior living 
it looks like this is just an age limitation, right? Correct. They can live so, independently. So that means my understanding is if you're whatever that age is, 55 or whatever, mm -hmm. as long as you're on the deed, whoever that is, you could have a 55 year old and several people under 55 living there, right? They said um, no. They told us no. no. It's the age. Said no. It's age. They're very strict. They said they're very strict with the age. And uh, Chris Clifton is on the line for Cliver Group. Um, Chris, yeah. if you speak to that. I'll be, I'll be happy to answer the question to Larry. Uh, our, our lease, our lease will not allow anyone to live on the property until they sign the lease and they have to be 55 or older. <laughs> well, my question would be, I had the same experience with another development in Indian Trail. Um, that's the same thing they said, but there was nothing on the lease or the deed that would say, you know, let's say it was me and I could qualify for that age restriction. There's nothing that says I couldn't have my teenage son and daughter and their two kids come in or something and live with me, right? No, that's, uh, you can't live on our property according to our lease unless you, one, sign the lease and you are 55 and above. So you could sign a lease, Larry, but if you had other people living there, they would also have to sign the lease and have to demonstrate that they're 55. And that's a HUD approved criteria that meets fair housing. And also, as Brandy and Matt can tell you, this is a conditional use, which requires us to guarantee that we meet the conditions of age restriction. And that's in perpetuity for the property. So even if it was sold or change 20 years from now, I mean, you, you, you can't, you would have to go back to the zoning board and ask for a conditional use to modify that 55 and above. That's correct. We're very, we're very familiar with the condition you mentioned, Larry, and we don't find it appropriate in our properties and we do everything we can to make sure that that doesn't occur. So along, along that thinking, it just seems kind of, unusual in my mind that there, there would be offerings of one, two, or three bedrooms then if that's the case. Well, if you if you look at the criteria on the site plan, 90% uh, of the units are two bedroom. That's our preference. Uh, our residents prefer to have the space of two bedrooms, even though we only traditionally have one occupant. Our average profile is a 71-year-old female that is either widowed or has a trailing spouse that's in memory care or offsite in assisted living. And she still wants the space, but uh, she doesn't really want to have to pay a premium for that. So we build into that in our 122, I think there'll be 98 units or 99 units that are two bedroom. And we have a few single bedrooms and a few that are three bedroom. Okay. All right, that answers my questions. Thank you very much. Thank you, Larry. Wait, Mr. Dukes, just to add to that, if you wanted that staff report, Parking, page nine and 10, uh, we broke down uh, the individual like number of uh, bedroom units, like um, 12 would be, um, let's see, spaces. Go on page 10, if that helps you. Yeah. Yeah, 99 of the units are two bedroom and then 11 are three bedroom and then um, 12 would be one bedroom. So Chris was correct that you know ninety percent two bedroom makeup. That's um, and if that helps you, the second paragraph. Okay, thank you, Matt. You're welcome. Okay, are there any additional questions from the board? We ready to go to a vote? I am, Madam. Okay, would you yeah. like to make a motion then? Matt, would you pull up the, um, what we have to say? <laughs> Madam Chair, I just wanna confirm, we have a, a Chris on the line and I just wanted to see if that was Chris McGuire. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I'm at the Okay, perfect. I just I just wanted to know whether or not to call your name for for the vote. And I'm having a volume issue. It's terrible on my phone, and it's a brand new phone. So, 
Um, anyways, I am here. Uh, so that is Chris McGuire? Yes. yes. Okay, Chris, do you have any questions regarding this project? Can you, Meg, can you just repeat what you said? I had to get on a, a headset here. Sure, absolutely. I was just asking if you had any questions about the project before we go to vote, since you were not able to be here on Tuesday. Um, I, I don't actually. I, uh, I'm very uh, in tune with uh, uh, these properties. Um, I have uh, family in the Western New York area and uh, that are, that are uh, just really, really familiar with, um, with what, what's being presented here in Indian Trail. Um, okay. So that's kind of neat. Uh, no questions. I read through uh, and also listened or watched as well uh, Tuesday's meeting. So a lot of great information. And I think, I think the traffic concerns are very valid. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's a concern. It's a genuine concern to all of us here in Indian Trail. I am, I'm understanding just based on the, uh, uh, the studies that, that have done, been done for this community, uh, based on um, uh, just the gentleman had mentioned, the developer had mentioned, um, you know, how uh, it, var it's, it varies uh, and, and they do everything they can to avoid the rush hour, the rush hour scenario. So no questions. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Cheryl, did you want to make a motion? Yes, I, yes, madam. I would like to make a motion to approve um, CZ 2020-0098. I would like to make a motion to approve it as presented. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, All right. Brandy, would you call the roll? Yes, ma'am. Cheryl Meany? Present, or uh, yes. <laughs> Larry mm -hmm. Dukes? Uh, I, I vote uh, approved. Michelle Reese. I think her call got dropped because I saw it said Michelle Reese. Oh. All right, I'll move on to Chris McGuire. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm approving um, uh, the uh, development. Okay. And Meg Fielding. Approved. Okay, and with the members that are present, that carries four to zero. That's great. Okay, when uh, will this come to the uh, Indian Trail Town Council? Um, February 9th, I believe, Randy, is that correct? Yes, this is scheduled for um, February 9th Town Council meeting. We will um, do all the appropriate and required notifications to the property owners within 500 feet of the property. Um, and I did want to quickly share one thing with, with the board also. Um, the town manager did approve for us to be upgraded to a um, panelist version of Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's going to be extremely helpful for our next um, hearings next month. And mm -hmm. what that means is the, um, the general public will link into a different um, uh, login and they will not be able to interact so that all the, the feedback and things that we experienced Tuesday night um, hopefully can be eliminated. Good. <laughs> Outstanding. Good. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> was. What, what happened on Tuesday night? You, you ain't miss anything. <laughs> <laughs> I had was... the joy of driving home on 485, which is always a pleasure. Oh, God. <laughs> No, there were, there were people who were not muting their um, yeah. their lines so that there was background conversation and dogs and <laughs> it was challenging, uh, that's all. Okay, so if we have completed all of our work for tonight, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. And a motion I to adjourn? There you go. <laughs> okay. I second it. <laughs> okay, all approved, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. The ayes have it. Good night, everybody. Thank Good you. Night. See you Thanks. next Thank month. Thank you so much for your Appreciate it. Thank you very much, people. Folks, have a good night.